going to the um trainers were were satisfactory for the state but it wasn't satisfactory for my organization i saw myself bigger i saw myself with more freedom not having to be in my hey you guys this is your coach dr andrea dickerson here with iownadaycare.com where we connect child care business owners with proven management solutions for today's proven management solutions i want to talk to child care business owners about three things that i wish i knew before starting my child care business so if you are interested in learning from my mistakes give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel stay tuned and i'll be right back this is for all of my visual learners you will retain 40 percent more of what you see than what you read and hear and at the school of systems i'm gonna host a virtual workshop called systems to the rescue so that i can show you the systems and the way to manage your child care business using systems to take your business to the next level. When you grab your virtual ticket, you're going to get behind the scene visuals. Go now, systems to the rescue.com. Yay! Thank you so much, you guys, for sticking along with me. So let's get started and get behind the scenes with these three things that I wish I was prepared for and that I wish I knew when owning and operating my own childcare business. And I'm pretty sure that this is why I got written up so much. This is why I had went through 52 new employees within my first year of owning and operating a childcare center. So I learned a lot. And um, I want to teach you what those are. So that's why I'm looking down because I have my list with me because I wanted to be very certain that I shared with you exactly what those three areas was that I wish I knew um, in, in order to be even more successful in my child care business. But I learned a lot and I'm hoping that you will learn from these as well. So number one, I wish I understood more about staffing, understanding the mindset of teachers, understanding what they needed. And so I wrote down three areas that I struggled with the most in my business. And I'm sure many of you struggle with staffing, but let me pinpoint why I struggle with staffing so that I won't just blame everything on teachers or blame, every, blame everything on staffing. Number one, I didn't understand the workflows for hiring. And so if you don't understand what it takes in order to have a person go from interest to being a part of your team, and understanding what being a part of your team is, then that's when you know you got to think through your workflows, think through step one, all the way to that person becoming a level five teacher. Now, you may not use the term level five teacher, but for us, that's what I use. And that is that person becoming the prime example, long-term employee that I need for my organization. So I didn't understand workflows. And because of that, I was hiring anybody that needed to that I could because I needed to fill a, a role and I was hiring anybody that wanted to work. And I was young, 21 years old. You know, I've never worked in management before, didn't have a business before that, didn't have any childcare experience, never worked in a daycare before. So I was literally obeying what I believe the Lord had told me to do. All right, number two, I wish I had an education system for my teachers. And this is critical. And so, you know, after bumping my head, learning from my mistakes, I realized like, wait a minute, in order for me to stop sounding like everybody else complaining that, man, you hire these teachers, they don't know nothing. They don't know nothing because they never worked in your child care business before, okay? And then it was like, man, you know, these people come in, they just want a quick job. They just want to, you know, quickly make a paycheck. And then in three weeks, they're gone. I experienced all of that. And I started sounding like that. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on. There's more to this industry that I can do than just complain. So I started looking at, I need an education system. And that's when I created educational tools. I created a standard. I created a leadership program. I created my own training that I needed for my teachers to know about my child care program. Going to the um, trainings were, were satisfactory for the state, but it wasn't satisfactory for my organization. I saw myself bigger. I saw myself with more freedom in my business every day. And in order for me to have achieved that, I had to implement my own education system. 
And so I did that. And when I did it, it changed the game for me. It allowed me to pour into my teachers. It allowed me to know their understanding of early childhood care and education. And then I could bet on myself. I could bet on my brand. I could bet on my processes and procedures because I was able to position myself as a leader with my own education system. I always ask you guys who come to me and say, I want to be a better leader. And I always say, well, what are you leading? What are you leading? You have to have your own education and leadership system in order to lead somebody, if that makes sense. Um, otherwise, you'll just become a mentor and it may not be the type of mentorship that your team need because I'm getting off track, but let me get off track to help somebody. So I, I wanted to be a good leader. And so I found myself mentoring, you know, with things they could do at home, things they could do with their family, you know, helping out, doing those type of things. But I realized, like, I am not their pastor. I am not their first lady. I am not their coach. I am their employer. So the best way I can lead is to lead them to becoming the best teachers they can be so that they can make the best that they can make in my organization. And so then that took me from wearing that hat, and many of you are doing it, where you are so supportive of your team, that you're leading your team from a place of a mentor, which that's important. But if you want to get to the money and really build a big business and have freedom, you got to have your own education system. And that's what you lead them with. You lead them with the education system. Now, here's my next one that I wish, number three, that I wish I knew in staffing was I knew, wish I understood proper marketing when getting started. So when I got started, I was asking mama, cousin, sister, brother, uncle, daddy, grand uncle, great uncle, anybody that could, that was able, that could do the work I was asking them because I had no clear marketing strategy. I didn't know how to attract team members through marketing. So I had some bumps along my journey and now that the time has changed i realized why i had to buckle down and create these things for my business because i wasn't wanting to operate in my business every day like i wanted to enjoy my life and not have to be in my childcare every day so that's what made me create these particular workflows my education system and tapping into some proper marketing strategy to attract team members Okay, and, and so here's the third, the second pillar that I wish I understood before starting my child care or leading my child care to the next level was that I wish I understood the type of energy in the personal skills that it took for me in order to lead, in order to grow my organization. And so when I tell you energy, it takes energy to lead several different personalities. It takes energy to leave everything at the school and go home and, and still love on your own children and still love on your own husband. It takes energy for that where you have to still put 90%, 80%, 50%, 100% in at home in order for you to feel as if you're not bringing your business to the house, you know? And so I wish I understood then what it took for me to show up every day as my best self. And so over time, I developed a layout for my life to help me accomplish that. But it took for me to have some mindset shifts. And it took for me to really realize, like, in order for me to really lead, I, I need more energy. So I had my first weight loss surgery. I got up to, like, 340 pounds. So, and that came from, you know, seated, sedentary jobs, sitting at my desk all day. Um, That came from eating whatever I wanted to eat on the go. And so once I had that weight loss surgery, I kind of got, got myself in other areas together, like picking out my clothes on Sunday for the whole week, color code in my week. Oh my goodness, so much I could tell you guys. When I started showing up in a better space and, and understanding the type of energy my business required, it kept me from complaining so much because I started figuring out like, okay, this is just business. This is what just happens in this business. All right, and then it also taught me to be ready, not get ready, but be ready. So when I started having those type of mindset shifts about the energy that it took for me to be successful, having you to work on a Saturday in my home office wasn't an issue. I could set hours and get it done. Having to work late night wasn't an issue. I could get it done because I understood like if I wanted to show up in my full capability that I needed to sacrifice. And so I did that. I led my business 
by understanding that I have to have energy to lead. Better eating habits, better sleeping habits, better things for me had to come forth in order for me to offer that. All right, and then here is the third pillar. And guys, I'm almost done. The third pillar is business organizational goals. So I really didn't understand about creating goals for my business. I was just like, I need to hire I need to, you know, clean out the bathroom. I need to clean out the shed. I need to clean out the storage. How many of you all got a storage that might need a little cleaning? And so I was setting mundane goals like that. Not saying they're not important. They are. But it was for me to understand that I needed to have bigger organizational goals. And so my organizational goals as I grew, I wish I would have known this starting out that I got to focus in on sustainability as a CEO. I got to focus in on understanding my market, understanding the market appearance that I have. And also I had to focus in on getting productivity up in my business because I used to hire teachers and they used to go in the classroom and sit down like, how are you sitting down in the room with 20 kids? Who does that? So that's when I realized like, I got to shift my thinking. I got to shift and put the right organizational goals in place that include increasing my productivity. And I was able to do that, guys. I learned quickly through the things that I suffered that if I want for my business to really shift, I got to shift. So I learned about sustainability, how I can sustain my, my, my company. And I learned about marketing, understanding my market, how to get the right people on my team. And I learned about productivity how to encourage the team that I have to be more productive by giving numbers and keeping track of data. And so I want to encourage you guys to join me for our all new training, learnnewsystems.com, where I'm going to go through giving you some of the systems that I use to improve in my staffing, my business organizational goals, and so forth. So if you're interested in being a part of that training, be sure to go to www.learnnewsystems.com. And as always, you guys, remember, if you manage the childcare business that you love, you will love the childcare business that you manage. Bye, you guys.